Nina has a, a very good diesel engine, it's a Perkins, with only uh, less than 3,000 hours on it, but it's 40 years old, and neither of us knows diesels. We didn't grow up with it, we don't, do it. yeah, we could learn it, but, but we both know electric, so we're going to add electric drive in the form of two e-propulsion Navy 6 outboard motors, uh, 48 volt, 6 kilowatt. So we're going to hang them off the transom. So we installed two aluminum tracks on both sides. We started with a plywood mock-up of a carriage to hold the motor. But this is falling apart now. But it was useful. And now we have them made out of fiberglass panels. These are half inch thick manufactured fiberglass panels. And these epoxied together with some uh, fiberglass mesh in there as well. These are polyethylene slides that will run inside the track. The motor will hang on here and we can retract it out of the water when not in use so we can sail without the drag of the propellers. We're at Annapolis Hybrid Marine where we're here to pick up our two e-propulsion electric motors. Come on, let's go inside. Yeah. So here we are. Um, so just as a little bit of an aside, when you have the opportunity to get a storage unit that's right across from the bathroom, take it. And it's very handy to be able to go into the bathroom and plug into the outlet in the bathroom. Because otherwise you don't have electricity. Right. Alright, so yeah, here we are. We've got some of our exhibit stuff and we have all kinds of foam packing that we're trying to figure out how to recycle. Mm -hmm. We'd rather not landfill it. Uh, so if anybody watching knows what to do with polyethylene foam, we would love to hear about it other than throw it out. All right. Uh, so let's see. Um, and yours are right here.
in the aft stateroom on Athena, and underneath this bed are the electronics necessary to control our two outboard motors. So uh, let's take a look at what we have under here. I'm going to peel back the mattress, and we're going to take a look at the brains behind this system. And here we are. This is where the battery management systems, the electronic vehicle charge controllers, voltage regulation, the brains, if you will, are all here. We have battery management systems one and two here that manage the two batteries, port and starboard. Um, all of the cells are managed so that the voltages are all kept equivalent as the battery charges or discharges and anything caught abnormally as a fault will be noted by the battery management systems. We have at this point an electric vehicle charge controller to charge up the batteries from the generator. Power terminal strips for positive and negative 12 volt for various components. A voltage regulator that manages the voltage from 14 nominally when uh, we are fully charged brings it down to 12.1 volts and the terminal strips for the 48 volt are located here for both battery one and battery two and under door number two we have the solar charge controllers both victrons for the starboard and port batteries this takes care of the four solar panels starboard and four solar panels port they are regulated by a series of breakers for port and starboard to allow me to turn the power off if need be. And on the forward facing wall, we have a electric vehicle charge controller that takes power from the generator and allows us to charge the battery if we're having cloudy days and need to have the battery charged immediately. The charge controllers can turn off automatically if the BMS senses a fault condition. If the BM, either of the BMSs senses a fault con condition, a relay, 12 volt relay, controls a 48 volt sensor that leads back into the charge controller and turns the charge controller off. Thus protecting the system. If there's a fault, it's communicated by the battery management system to the charge controller to shut down. We are able to talk with the battery management systems through two USB ports that we have set up to talk to BMS1 and BMS2 and the two charge controllers we can access through USB ports here to bring up a terminal and to be able to talk with the charge controllers or with the battery management systems. If you'd like to see more about how this system is set up and how the components communicate with each other, check out episode 39 and episode 40 where we actually go into the theory behind the operations and show you how we wired each component up. That should provide a little bit more information. And now it's time to go take a look at our throttles and look at the runtime operations. Let's go upstairs, take a look. We're here on the bridge of Athena, and this is where the magic happens. We've got our clunky diesel, so we can motor using dyno power, or we can go with electric. And we've got two throttles here, which I'll demonstrate shortly, uh, starboard and port. And this will allow for the props to either work together in the same direction or opposing directions so that we can actually push and pull to turn the boat theoretically with greater accuracy and finesse. Um, the e-propulsion systems come with displays that allow me to set every possible option that you could think of. Let's take a look at these. We're going to power the systems up and let you take a look. So we've got our display starboard and throttle, display port and throttle. And uh, 
throttles are very simple. Pull out and push forward for any range of speed. Locking center, detent, pull back. We'll power the systems up. Hold down the power button and hold down the power button. GPS positioning tells us our direction and our speed and wattage used. We have these set for 48 volts right now, so we'll just fire these babies up. And right now we're we're spinning the props. You can barely hear a thing. They're both spinning. We can easily get into the menu by holding down the menu button on the left. We can specify the power limit, which allows us to set any variable between the full 100% power usage and if we need to limit the power for any reason because our battery won't allow for perhaps 100% usage, we can limit that. We can set the units to either metric or English and various settings on the battery where we can actually specify what type of battery it is, how many amp hours, the high and low end voltages, and whether or not we're going to be doing hydro regeneration. Calibrate the throttle, and of course we can just check the version of, of the system. We can exit at any time by hitting the menu button one more time, and we're back. And that's all there is to this. Uh, it's relatively easy to set up. Uh, the instructions are well written. And I would highly recommend Annapolis Hybrid Marine as a purveyor of these products. They provide excellent service and feedback. And if you have any questions, they'll take care of you. Just tell them Kristen sent you. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you on the next episode of Accidental Jive. We're launching soon. We'll see you soon for that. Bye.